Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us today for this webinar on developing a business case that delivers value to your business. We'll take a business analyst approach, but I truly believe that anyone who initiate, contribute, take part in developing a business case will find this following webinar relevant to them too. Let's start with some housekeeping points. Right. A few words on uh, my experience and career. Uh, I work for the last yeah, 15 years in Asia Pacific um, in company like Ericsson, Marconi, PricewaterhouseCoopers. Um, I uh, took on role as operation manager, project manager, business analyst, senior business analyst, um, and obviously consultant. I'm a PMP certified as well as CBAP uh, certified, so a project manager professional uh, from the PMI organization and certified business analyst professional from the IIBF. I'm currently an instructor in Europe and the Middle East in both business analyst, project management, business strategy, as well as business intelligence. All right, let's get started. Um, as you can see from the agenda, we'll start by defining a few concepts and understanding why do we develop business case. We'll then review the traditional key component of a business case and I will introduce the concept of benefits, identifying benefits and including those benefits as a section in your business case. So we'll go through how important it is to identify benefits. I will explain why I see the role of the business analyst critical in identifying those benefits. Um, not just in the business case, but also throughout the project life cycle and even post project to assess is um, after the project is completed those benefits have actually been realized. The following section will be more on the practicality. How do we integrate benefit to the business case? And I will run through a few examples as well as giving you some advice on what's the best way to go with um, integrating benefits. And we will see that if you do this, you will really develop a more effective business case that can really set the right foundation for the rest of your project. We'll finish with the traditional question and answer. All right. So why do we develop business case? I've included here the PM box so um, project management body of knowledge guide fifth edition um, definition uh, of a business case and um, it shouldn't be any surprise for all of you really a business case presents a justification to allow the top executive the management to make a decision on a proposed initiative a proposed change in the organization if the business case is accepted then uh, a project will be launched and a budget is often allocated for um, this project. I could actually have used the um, Babok uh, definition of what is a business case, especially uh, with the Babok version 3, for those of you who are familiar with IIBA business analyst body of knowledge, so that Babok. Um, the recently published, only a few days ago, uh, version 3 has actually a really improved definition, I think, of what is a business case. So let me read it to you. A justification for a course of action based on the benefit to be realized by using the proposed solution as compared to the cost and effort, and effort sorry, to acquire and live with that solution. As you can see, the Babok, um, uh, this new version of the Babok, and I'm really pleased to see 
um, is really catching up on the new trend and uh, what I see as the future um, for both project management and, and business analyst field where we're not just focusing on deliver a product, deliver a result, but really on bringing value to the organization. So um, this focus on benefit to be realized uh, is for me what is going to make your business case um, effective and I'll present um, why in the following slide. But let's just um, look at where does your, bus your business case originate. It can really come from any part of the organization, but traditionally it is developed during what we call enterprise analysis or um, strategy analysis. So as the executive define what will be the strategic axis for the organization and following the um, uh, analysis of the organization, what are our strengths or weaknesses, what um, are the current problem, what are the current opportunity, um, we'll then identify initiative, potential project that can be run and um, as a result we'll develop business case to justify why the organization need to invest uh, in uh, those initiatives and how, and that's the key point, how those projects will actually support the organization achieving its strategic or bringing the organization to the next level uh, in terms of its development. So, uh, the last point, it helps determine which project initiatives the organization should uh, undertake. It really provides a reasoning behind why uh, we're proposing this initiative and it should really be a key tool for strategy implementation. Alright, um, okay, so now that we're all clear on uh, on what is a business case, let's look at the key component of the business case. Um, again, we'll start with the executive summary, but there will be three sort of major um, sections in a business case. The first one is more the project description. It's more um, uh, presenting why um, we came up with this idea, with this initiative, with this future project, uh, so we'll have the purpose, the objective, the background, uh, hopefully we'll start having an idea of the scope or high level solution requirements and we'll include all the elements as we are very early stage of in terms of what are the assumption, dependency, constraints and risk uh, associated with this initiative. The second section will be more focused on the project economics or the financial and we'll see all the standard financial indicators like return on investment, internal rate of return, payback period, um, anything that um, demonstrates to the organization that this project is sound in terms of financial. With that, we'll also include the estimate used for developing those indicators. And in those estimates, we can sometimes see a start of what are the benefits uh, especially presented as what are the expected revenues that we're hoping to achieve with this um, implementing this initiative or this new project, or maybe um, what are the cost savings that we expect to um, have uh, if we uh, complete this project. But it's all, often only represented as a line and not really well detailed as to what are the real benefit behind this uh, project or initiative. Finally, the third section will be more about the timing. Uh, when should we start? How long it will take? What would be the key milestone? And you can have also all the, uh, after that, all the appendixes um, to support uh, what has been included above. But as you see, when we actually working in developing the business case, we often spend a lot of effort and a lot of time on the 
second section, the project economy, on justifying this initiative on financial growth, uh, on financial grounds. Sorry. Um, in other words, we're trying to say, is really um, this investment uh, worth it compared to all the other alternatives? This is good, but is it enough? Do we just look at projects from only a cost point of view? And you will see that what I believe is missing is really what are the value, what are the benefits that uh, this project, this initiative will bring to the organization. If you include both um, elements uh, in your business case, you will see that it will become a lot more effective and in particular, when you will get to the end of your project, when you're actually testing your project success. So how do we assess project success? So I really move fast forward to after the business case has been accepted, we run the project and we completed this project. How do we assess project success? Well, based on the business case, we assess the project success based on are we on time, are we on budget, and are we as per scope. In other words, is the deliverable that we had uh, de detailed, documented in our business case, are they completed, are they accepted? But is that enough? The problem is what the organization really wants is how we deliver the value, how we realize the expected benefits that we set to achieve when we created or when we raised this initiative. If it's not in the business case, there's no way at the end of the project, at the completion of the project, post-project also, to really assess if you have actually realized the benefit. So that's why it is critical and important to identify those benefits right from the start um, and set the target for all the stakeholders, for the project manager, for the business sponsor, for all the people that will be involved in developing uh, and working on the project, what are we trying to achieve? What is really the value that we expect to gain from investing in this opportunity? So if we introduce those benefits right from the start, we will begin our project, we will set the foundation of our project with the end in mind, all right? I'll give you an example. I, um, as a consultant, I did a lot of ERP, Enterprise Resource Planning Implementation. When company came to us um, to ask um, for our support to implement ERP, they were saying, can you help us implement an ERP system? But Really, do they need it an ERP system? Or more importantly, did they need it to automate their back office function to achieve specific benefits, specific value? Some of the organizations I supported or I, uh, provided consulting with uh, were focused more on getting visibility on their uh, current stock level improving their supply chain, uh, improving their accounting performance. So, as you see, it's not the ERP implementation that they were looking after. It, the value that the ERP implementation were, was actually going to bring to their organization. So, if we clearly state those benefits right from the start, uh, not only you know what um, the stakeholders, the customers, the sponsor wants to achieve, uh, but you also have a good opportunity to align the project with your business strategy and ensuring that it will actually help the organization um, get to the next level. So not only you know what value you're going to create, but you see how this value will support 
the implementation of the of uh, your strategy. Um, it will also help communicate, so clearly help everyone understand the true value of the initiative. And if everyone understands those um, value, they will be able to work towards really delivering it. Um, finally, and again, um, it will ensure that the organization has a business case that is effective, that's not just a, a justification for an investment, but it's really um, a business case that is value-driven compared to just cost-driven, if you want, in other words. Um, so I hope I've started to get you excited about um, introducing those uh, benefit or benefit metrics, benefit targets um, into your business case. And before we look at how we're going to do it, let's see who's going to do it. So, as I said, um, I think the business analyst can play a critical role uh, in, ident in the identification, documentation, uh, and uh, communication of benefits uh, through the business case, but also throughout the rest of the project and even post-project implementation. Um, why so? Because um, business analysts, and maybe in here more the senior business analysts, um, has a good understanding of the organization. If he's been involved in um, the enterprise analysis, he should know the um, organization um, from a uh, strategic, tactical, and operational level. He'll know how it is uh, structured, what are the policy, what are the opportunity, what are the problems, um, and it will really help um, align uh, both the strategy with the operation and ensure that um, the benefits uh, really cascade, if I can put it, from the strategic level all the way to the operational level. So, um, due to his knowledge of the organization, uh, he's in a really good position to actually help identify and support the inclusion of all. Uh, the documentation of those uh, benefits. Also, when we work on benefits, it's not just one person involved. It's often uh, a number of persons that will be either responsible, that will own the benefits. Some will be there to track um, uh, those benefits. Uh, some will be there to contribute to those um, the realization of those benefits. So, you really need to bring all of those people together. And I think one of the key characteristics of a business analyst is his capability or his ability to act as a liaison among all stakeholders. So he can connect, he can engage the right people to ensure we've identified the best benefit or the value that we really want to um, uh, achieve with this business case and make sure it's well communicated and everyone is agreeing on um, those benefits. Finally, I think the business analyst has a good set of tools and techniques that can support um, this identification of uh, benefits. So I'm going to list a few um, of those tools and techniques um, that I believe will support um, the identification of benefits, but there's obviously a lot more uh, and that can come from uh, many different parts of the organization, as I said, not just the business analyst, but uh, some of the more specific business analyst tool and technique are concept modeling, benchmarking and market analysis, data mining, mind mapping, process analysis and modeling, business capability analysis, all of those tools and techniques will be critical if you really want to identify the value, the right benefit that the, uh, we want to uh, achieve through this initiative, through this project. And finally, why, another reason why I think the business analyst is in a, a, a best position to support um, the introduction of benefits into our business case is again 
through the analysis of the requirement, um, the PA has a real insight into the problem or the opportunity and can really see the solution requirement. And associated with those solution requirements, we can link the benefits. So, again, this insight through the analysis of the requirement gives the business analyst, again, an edge in identifying the benefit. Having said that, I will also say that um, the business analyst can be anyone. A PM can be a business analyst. A business analyst can is the role and the activity done by um, uh, associated with business analysis. So, uh, yes, I certainly think that a business analysis mind mindset is critical for identifying benefits. But anyone working on a business case can take on this role and really help identify benefits. All right. So now we're clear what we need to change in our business case to bring be more effective. We know what the skill sets and um, uh, the type of approach that need to be uh, brought in. So how are we going to do it? How to integrate our benefit target to the business case? Well, the first thing is obviously to try to identify benefits that will contribute to uh, our strategy. Uh, in other words, looking at benefits that are uh, aligning our strategy with the investment that we're going to make and the changes that we're going to make in our organization. Once we start identifying those benefits, we need to really be realistic and focus on tracking the metrics that matters. All right. Uh, what I mean by that is really choose benefit and outcome that will really define, explain what are the benefits or the value we want to achieve. So, and that brings us to the next point, define clear metrics, um, clearly the metrics to be used. Uh, what does that mean? You have to identify the metric, you have to define the target, uh, you have to identify the data source, where the, how, how we're going to uh, be able to track these benefits and where, what the data we're going to use to do that. And develop a, a, a forecast, what are the targets. And it, often it's more like a tolerance or a, a range that we want to achieve. Um, and as we're doing that, we should do that based on current baseline. It won't be possible for all benefit because sometimes we don't actually have a current baseline. So if you don't have a baseline, you should just go with a, a target. Uh, but if you um, use, and I certainly recommend to use maybe uh, KPIs, metrics already um, developed and used in the organization, you need to really um, identify the current baseline so you can really demonstrate at the end of the project that you really delivered the value. We really move from the current position to the future, to the uh, an improved uh, future state. All right. Uh, so now we've identified the metrics that really matter. We know how uh, we'll uh, track those metrics. We need to set an agreed target, and it can be at different time of the project, uh, a different milestone of the project. And more importantly, that the benefit owner, so identify a person responsible for this benefit and agreeing with him that this is the right level, that's a realistic target, that's the right level that, of value that we can um, achieve. Honestly, that's the most difficult part. Uh, as it's a real change in mindset and um, uh, often the benefit owner uh, will be quite reluctant to commit uh, to a target. So um, you, will, you might spend quite some time uh, agreeing, setting and agreeing on those targets with the benefit owner. But it needs to be done and it needs to be done at the business case level. All right. How 
do, are we going to measure those benefits? So hopefully, and the easiest way, um, is often through monetary, um, uh, monetary metrics. Um, that's uh, the standard uh, traditional uh, way of defining benefits. So uh, anything with a financial term in it, like revenue generation, cost reduction or cost saving. Uh, that's the one we often already have as a one-liner, but not really set as a target um, in, the, in our business case. If you really want to develop benefits and, and really bring uh, a, a good picture of what the value you want to achieve, you will have to use also what I call what um, classify as non-monetary benefits. And I'll give you some examples in the next slide, so stay with me on that. But what is the non-monetary benefit? It's um, benefit that can be quantified, but not in financial terms. So that could be anything like fewer, uh, few, fewer or less customer complaint, uh, productivity gain, uh, greater accuracy, lower staff turnover, increased response time, anything that, uh, again, that we often track in organization um, that really uh, show um, the bigger picture of the value that we can create with um, any initiative, any project. Um, we can also identify what is called indirect benefit. Again, it might be more, again, intangible type of metrics, but it's important to identify them and try to find ways, uh, and that's where I say be creative, um, to uh, capture those um, intangible benefits. So, uh, example could be end user satisfaction, better access to information, organization image, customer service, uh, better moral or better uh, brand image. All of those um, are example of, again, uh, benefits that are non-monetary that for me are as important and should be identified clearly with set target and a benefit owner right from the start in your business case. So okay, we've discussed um, how to integrate, but what, uh, what can I, what are, let me give you some examples. Uh, First example, as I said, I've done quite a few ERP implementation. So let's look at ERP implementation project. What is the deliverable? Obviously, the ERP system implemented and working, hopefully. Uh, that's the deliverable. That's the scope. But what can be benefit target? Again, this will be specific to each project, to each organization to each um, strategy that the organization wants to implement. So some example here could be a target for greater stock accuracy. So I put real-time stock value, reduction of the level of discrepancy between stock level and actual stock. Um, and here it's important to define targets. So uh, we had maybe before discrepancy of 5% or 10% and we want less than 2%. Again, um, this needs to be very specific and applicable to the circumstances of the organization. That's where benchmarking uh, tool can help you also. What other companies do once they implement it, for example, an ERP system, what can we hope to achieve in terms of value um, uh, or benefits uh, in the area that are of focus or interest for us. Another benefit target could be re reduce time taken to do the monthly account closure from six days to three days. Uh, again, that's um, 
was very specific. I did have these um, uh, cases in uh, a conglomerate of company where they needed each um, organization, each um, uh, company um, to really br close their account uh, in a more uh, uh, faster, in a faster way. So um, definitely that uh, was for them a key value because as each company could close their account uh, faster, then there was more time for reporting, there was more time for uh, executive uh, analysis and um, also uh, more time for uh, the conglomerate to uh, compile and integrate all the different um, uh, company uh, account uh, closure. So, hope that now make more sense to you. I'll give you another um, example, quite different uh, in developing an internet banking application for smartphones. Obviously, the deliverable is a secure internet banking phone apps that um, uh, work. Um, uh, but what will be the benefit target? Uh, you can have benefit target like increase market share by 10% in the 18 to 24 age group, improve visibility of the brand, easier access to information, increase customer satisfaction. All right. I hope that gives you a good sense of how we can uh, really move from just defining a scope a deliverable of a project to identifying benefit and benefit target. A uh, quick common mistake when we're developing benefit and benefit metrics. Be very careful to um, not to be specific. Be very specific, and it's better to be, you know, not exactly accurate in your target, but to actually have a target. Um, loosely define um, a benefit. Uh, can be worse than uh, not having benefit. Uh, in the sense that if you give, for example, improve the efficiency of the whole department, yes, that's maybe an objective, but what is the actual benefit? What is the actual value that we want to achieve? So try to be much more specific. Are we looking at efficiency in terms of... Uh, 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 speed of um, processing a transaction? Are we looking at efficiency in terms of cost saving? Are we be really right to the metric level? Uh, if you stay too vague, uh, your benefit won't be able to be tracked, won't be able to be measured, won't be able uh, to be realized at the end of the project. So, uh, again, there's a lot of work that needs to happen uh, with all the people involved to really uh, set uh, realistic uh, but specific metrics or targets that uh, the whole project team will be able to focus on uh, to deliver through the implementation of the project. All right. So just a few other points in terms of what are, I would say, the success factor to uh, in, in, include benefit in your um, business case. The first one is ownership is key. Uh, this means that you need uh, early and sustained engagement of stakeholders uh, in saying, yes, I'm the owner of this benefit. Uh, I think the metrics is the relevant metric to track this benefit. Uh, I know how we're going to measure it and we'll be able to report on uh, when we have realized this benefit. This is a real cultural change um, in some organization and you do need to spend some good time uh, to uh, really emphasize the importance of having an owner. And this needs to be also uh, planned at multiple levels of the business uh, if you want uh, uh, to really implement it uh, well. Um, so clear upfront ownership uh, is really key to uh, 
benefit to to developing effective business case uh, with uh, benefit metrics. Um, second point: Do not reinvent the wheel. Use measure available. Uh, again, we're not trying to um, uh, to add more ways of measuring things in the organization. We're just looking at what is the real value we want to get from a project and how can we measure this value, how can we track we've actually um, uh, realized this value. Uh, if it's too hard, if it's too complicated to um, measure this benefit, people won't do it. So try to keep it simple, try to use measure available, but also try, as I mentioned earlier, try to be creative, especially on the non-monetary, because for me they are the, the real uh, bonus to your business case is the non-monetary benefit that really gonna bring the total picture of what the organization is trying to achieve with this future initiative, future project with this uh, initiative. Uh, again, to continue with capturing the big picture, use more than one measure. Uh, we don't track just one benefit. There's a, a a set of benefits that is associated with each project and you might want to have a set of measure for each benefit or you know more than one measure to um, uh, to track the benefit. Again, um, benefit value in organization can be complex so try to have ways to really look at all the different angles. Other point, you need to be outcome driven to look at the result. And if possible, try to identify quick wins. What I mean by that is benefit doesn't just, or value when we implement project or when we run, we're doing project, doesn't necessarily happen at the end. They can actually be integrated as you're developing your project, even more so if you're doing um, uh, agile development. Uh, but again, once you identify benefits, and you looking at when the benefit will be realized. Try to add, see when if there's any quick win that can happen. Uh, and also track. And if you're uh, through the project, your benefit go off track. Try to find ways to bring it back to uh, your target. So be really outcome driven. Be really what are the other word value driven in uh, in both defining and then capturing and uh, tracking your benefits. Uh, and do not just limit in delivering the benefit, but can you maximize the benefit? Can you maximize the value? Uh, again, this is where you can uh, really use the investment, the money that's been put for this uh, initiative to really help your organization get to the next level. Um, so again, uh, Maybe that's, you know, more advanced, but this is, I think, uh, the ultimate driver to uh, uh, including benefit is maximizing the benefit for all investment that the organization, all project investment that the organization is doing. Uh, as you can see, I've put a, an example of a small table of how you can actually present um, your benefits um, in your business case. Um, as I said, a table for me it's much much more easier than uh, a lot of words. So um, again, there's maybe different way where you can introduce benefit. But uh, if you could uh, add a section in your business case that focus on benefit and uh, integrate a table as as uh, presented as this example uh, here, uh, you already uh, on. Uh, you're already on the right path. So yes, you need to define the benefit, define the owner, define the metrics, uh, the target obviously with the metric, when this um, uh, benefit will be achieved, uh, and obviously with uh, data source and a lot of additional information that you can add. So again, this is just an example to get you started and uh, practi practically make it happen in your business case. So, 
we're getting to the end. If you do integrate benefit as part of your business case, you will really set the foundation for the rest of your project. Because those benefit metrics, benefit targets, can then be used to really give the direction for the project team and all the stakeholders uh, involved in the project. And they will know exactly what needs to be delivered, what, what, uh, what you're trying to achieve and what value needs to be realized through this project. Um, it will also allow the, the project manager, for example, the business analyst, uh, to pay particular attention on elements that will deliver value to the project. So it will give focus. Uh, as I said, if you um, implement an ERP system and your focus is on um, real stock value, you might really spend uh, a quite detailed amount of time in making sure that you get um, all the configuration around uh, your stock, stock management really pertinent to what the organization wants to achieve. So again, not only it helps uh, understand the end of what we want to achieve at the end of the project, but it focus your action throughout the project on, on the right, on the key elements that um, need to be implemented to achieve the value at the end. Uh, it will also, again, um, if you have to make any decision, you know, you have to revise the scope, you need to, um, uh, the change of, there's a change in, uh, in the budget and you have to cut things, you will look at making um, this decision based on the value that you want to achieve and maybe take elements uh, that will not impact as much um, the value that you want to achieve at the end. So it will really add um, time in terms of change management, in terms of um, uh, decisions uh, that you make throughout the project, uh, ensure that they back up with uh, the right um, focus, the right uh, uh, approach to still ensuring that we will deliver value. And it goes, of course, beyond project completion because often the benefit is also realized post-project completion. It's once the ERP system is running and it's been running for a few days, months, that we can actually realize the benefits. It's once um, the, the, for example, my internet um, banking uh, phone application has been, um, you know, uh, uh, downloaded by a range of a um, uh, number of people that you can actually see uh, uh, the, the benefit realized. So um, it really uh, helps you uh, to uh, capture this value after the project is completed. So we really have the continuation from pre-project in the business case, throughout the project and post-project. Uh, and that will make your business case becoming the strategic driver all throughout uh, the project life and post project life actually. Uh, it will also ensure uh, that um, you will invest in initiatives that will help you uh, implement your strategy and that you can really assess the true value of uh, and true success of your project. It's not that you've been um, on time, on budget, on score, but you also brought the value, the expected value, the expected benefit has been realized, and, and you really achieved what you were set to do uh, at um, the time of the business case. All right. Just the last few words of conclusion. Um, being French, I did use... Uh, a quotation from Antoine de Saint-Exupéry. Saint I tried to do it with the English accent, it doesn't work. Antoine de Saint-Exupéry. Um, you might be familiar with this uh, quotation, but really for me what it means is that if the project team can understand the vision and the business value of the project, they will yearn, they will want to uh, delivers that business value to, um, to the organization. Uh, 
they will become a lot more engaged in their work and hopefully a lot more enthusiastic in delivering it. Again, they won't deliver a, pro a product, they will deliver value. And I think it's a lot more exciting to deliver value than to deliver, in my case, an ERP system. All right. So I hope I convince you to integrate this notion of benefits right from the start in your business case and that you will now be on your way to developing effective business case. We'll now take a few questions and thank you again for your time. Um, hope you enjoy uh, this webinar and um, feel free to contact me if you have any further questions.